It'll get easy. It just seems difficult right now. Um, so talk me through, talk me through your skills just from a self-analysis subjective standpoint, right? You're inside the, inside the jar, inside the bottle, so to speak, so. I think putting was good. Uh, chipping was okay, but um, anything from 40 to 60, I, I wasn't really happy with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like my distance control was accurate enough. Mm -hmm. So I think I wanted to work on this. Do you think that was a function of uh, slightly missed contact or do you feel like it was just my range of motion, the amount of swing that I had for the distance the ball was supposed to travel just didn't match up? Um, like the ball didn't go as far as I wanted to yeah. or like sometimes you go, go too far so it's distance control but also I think some of it is also because of contact. So I think the longer ones um, I just uh, maybe my is there my speed or like my backswing length is off, but mm -hmm. then the ones that are short is due from contact. Understand. So I think it's a bit of both. Bit of both. We'll investigate both. All right, ready when you are. Forty meters. Should be close to forty-one meters. How was the contact? Two more. 40 meters. One more actually. Oh. There's the thin one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to be patient and capture at 40 meters. <clears throat> and is that like that first one you said, hey, it doesn't, it's not actually thin, but it's just a little lower on the club face. Yeah. This one was even lower. Though. Even lower, okay. So in terms of like capturing or having vision into the actual error, that last shot was it. <laughs> at least it's most too like it. too quick here in transition. I'm not ready to tell you because I want to see five at 50 meters and then five at 60 meters, so stand by. Because the last thing I want to do is tell you something to change and it not be the right thing, even if it's close to the right thing, but it's still not exactly the right thing. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, 50, 50 meters, 55 yards. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. Thank you. 60 meters, 66 yards. All right, so take a look here. Come into my office. Right around the corner. Let's take a look. There's not so much variability in the contact to suggest that the contact is the reason that you're missing your carry distance, whether the miss on the contact sorry, whether the miss and the carry distance is short of the intent. Like let's say you're trying to go in 60 and you hit at 57. Well, there's not a contact error there that's gonna do that. There's also not a contact error there, high or even far out in the toe that would cause either too long or too short. Here's the issue that we've got. <clears throat> so here is one swing that you're trying to hit 40. Here is the swing at 50. Okay, now watch these. What difference in range of motion on the clock would you see right there? Half hour or something? Yeah, it's about a half hour. You know what normal is? Normal for 10 yards is a half hour. So that is normal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the range of motion difference, the swing length difference as you move from hitting 40 meters to 50 meters and now we're gonna get to 60. What do you see? It's the same. It's the same. So if you're 60, it's the same as for your 50. So the range of motion difference as you're trying to hit 40 is good, 50 is good, and then 60 is the same range of motion as 50, which means you've got to do what? Be quicker and accelerate more. And acceleration is a very slippery slope because if you're intending to accelerate more and that being the thing that causes the change in distance, it's very easy to hit with too much versus too little acceleration. So what we have to do is we have to build a better template for range of motion to hold you accountable to. And if we just hold you accountable to range of motion for a given carry distance, you being a world-class player, being one of the best players in the world, is gonna figure out the acceleration feeling, which could be a rhythm or a tempo, to be able to hit that proper distance.
Copy. So you want the speed to be the same? I want the, of the feeling speed. of the speed to be the same. The but clubhead speed is going to be different. The clubhead yeah. speed has to be different to produce a different ball speed, but the feeling of acceleration is going to be the same. All right, now my job is to uh, be the disc jockey over here, the DJ controlling the computer. Uh, and the reason for that is we're just going to build a range of motion template, okay? And we're going to say, we're going to start from full. So what's full distance for you? 70. 70 meters? Great. All right. So we're going to hit three shots that each go 70 meters. Go for it. Oh, that was bad. That was thin, wasn't it? Yeah. The ball's too far back for that 70 meter shot. Better. Better. Nice. Voila. Is that still too much? What'd you say? It's still too much, 11, 7? No, no, it's fine. Uh, that last shot went normalized 76 meters. That one went 74 meters. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is always going to be your left toe. Somewhere here is going to be the back edge of the golf ball. I'm going to bring your left toe to the left. Or to your right. Keep coming, keep coming. Beautiful. Now take this one, half inch this way. Fantastic. Now where's the ball position? Middle. Middle. That's Standby. as far back as you'd go? Unless you're trying to really uber low launch it. That's as far back as I want it to go. I don't want, I don't want an error in ball position producing the low contact that causes the ball to travel short of where you want it to. Understand? But if you want to get more distance. Oh, you get more distance through lower dynamic loft and more club head speed. But don't achieve your low dynamic loft by moving the ball position back. Really? Yeah. Again, why? Why, why do we no not contact? want to achieve a low dynamic loft by moving the ball back? Because at this point of the arc, the club head is still high above the ground. And if we're catching it high above the ground, we're catching it thin. So we can achieve low dynamic loft from an um, uh, appropriate ball position is what I'm getting at. And this is by no means too far forward. Go and take your stance. Yeah, good. Okay, let me take one little scoot back. Go for it. That's too high. 31 degrees of launch is not too high, but I would like to see it one degree lower. You got a little end of the wind shooting the ball up as it comes out of the bay right here. 72 meters. You want it lower, you got to achieve dynamic loft, not static, not ball too far back. 29 degrees of launch, that's really nice. It's still gone too far. Probably 74 meters. Yeah, it's closer. How was that strike, Sling? Solid. One more. Then we graduate with the assumption that this one is successful. Yeah, successful. Okay. Here's where our template begins. Right toe, left toe, golf ball. Head, head, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, 30 degrees is 10, another 30 degrees is 11. So for a 70 meter shot, where's your left arm? 10.30. Uh, 10.30. Okay, for a 60 meter shot, where are we expecting your arm? 10. Perfect. Go for it. Well, how far back did it go on the, hmm? in the warm-ups? I forgot. Doesn't matter. Oh, really? We're building a template now. Oh. You're already making a mistake in terms of same range of motion. Hey, hey. Same range of motion for 60 versus 50. Your 50 meter swing length may change a little bit. But moving forward, this is your reference. So as you're on the range, you've got your caddy standing in front of you. It's very easy to see left arm parallel to the ground at nine o'clock. And then having a nine o'clock reference makes 10 easy to see, makes 10.30 easy to see in your caddy. We need to train that caddy up to be able to tell you when you've got TrackMan sitting behind you or GC Quad or FlightScope, whatever device is gonna give you feedback 
to your carry distance. Then you use your carry distance or your caddy's feedback on range of motion to really refine this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then when warm up comes on Thursday through Sunday, it's a fairly easy thing to just integrate into your warm up of one at 50, one at 40, one at 50, one at 60, one at 70, and then you're done. Got it? So we want 10 o'clock here, and we're gonna hold at 10 o'clock until we hit both the range of motion and the acceleration to make it go 60 meters, go. Oh, that's too far. Okay, so it's gone 70 meters, but why did it go 70 meters? Take a look at the screen, please, please, please. Range of motion error. You see it? See, it's one too far. Now, if we need to, we can just make it tough on you. You ready? We can make it tough on you. I can hold this, and I can see on the screen that I've got this grip at about 10 o'clock, so you, you better not, yep, ready, you better not touch it. Too short? Oh, that's the discovery, isn't it? The answer is no. The answer is it's not too short. Range of motion, was too short, you're right. Let's do it again. Imagine me holding the club there again, please. Take a look at the range of motion. Do we call that good? 65. So slightly long in range of motion, it's like 10, 15, yeah? For 64. You'll get really good at this. It's pretty tough. Because uh, what you feel like it is and what it is, is different. Uh, exactly. And so December, I was doing the same process with Tom Kim and he hated it. It was like ripping a band-aid off. He said, no, 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 no. This is how I control this. I'm like, okay, prove it to me. And he wasn't good enough with it. He wasn't world-class with it. And so we spent day after day, probably three consecutive days, just working in front of a screen, him develop the awareness for range of motion, eyes open, eyes closed, the amount of force to the ball, and he got really good at it. Now, every event that I go to with him, like I described, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's easy for him. Integrated into his warm up, Thursday through Sunday, one ball, he's like, ooh, I've got this dialed. So he owns the skill now. It's only difficult because you don't own the skill right now. What skill are we talking about? We're talking about differentiating range of motion, swing length, and then kind of normalizing the acceleration so we control our distance of wedges just with an awareness for how much I swing. It'll get easy. It just seems difficult right now. 10-10, too much acceleration. Not even gonna show it to you. This time, since each time I want you at 10 o'clock, you've gone slightly beyond 10 o'clock unless I held a club there. This time I want the error to be on the opposite side. Okay. Right? You know the um, Goldilocks nursery rhyme, don't you? You know Goldilocks? Do they not teach Goldilocks in France? No? I don't know what that is. Too much, too little, just right. She went to the three bears house and she tried the beds. One was too big, one was too small, and one was just right. She tried the porridge, one was too hot, one was too cold, and, just, and one was just right. We're using the Goldilocks principle right now. If your error is always on one side, we'll call it too hot. Now I want too cold. Too hot is too much range of motion. Now I want too little range of motion. Fire away. Ah, well done. Now, how much more versus less acceleration did you just feel? More acceleration. More, yeah, exactly. And that's the intuitive part. Watch this, watch this. Here's the range of motion coming up. Did Goldilocks give us the too cold? Yeah, ever so slightly. Yeah, so rather than being 10, it's about 9.50, and then you accelerate a little bit too much, but you still got 63 meters. So we'll call that in the good shot bucket. Plus or minus three is good. Take a look. See how I shorten the range of motion a lot? Yeah. Now this one's by yourself, you hit it 58 meters, right? Shorter range of motion, shorter distance, makes sense. I'm gonna take this away. That was right at 10. Take a look, range of motion. Agreed. 60 meters. Okay, guess what we're gonna do now? 50 meters. Right, where is 50? Nine. Great. No. Uh, yeah, uh, 9.30, right? Yep. It makes sense how it's too far because the range of motion was too great. Yeah? Yeah. I forced you to be Goldilocks that time. I forced the range of motion shorter. Then you accelerated a little bit more for 50. Or did I? Take a look. Where's your mid-hands? Mid-hands pretty close to 9.30, .30, isn't it? Nice job. Where's your carry distance? 53, so you accelerate it a little bit more. Try and find that same, same spot. 
range of motion. It's pretty important that you're watching this so you know at least what part of this you're successful with. Like if you're not successful, then just tell me and I'll delete it. But if you are successful, like with the range of motion right here, I think it's pretty important that you pick up on that signal. At least you're giving yourself a pat on the back saying, good, I'm doing that part correct. And then you can figure out whether you're doing the acceleration piece correct, which you did because you got 48 meters right there, yeah? I did chunk it though. Mm, bummer. <laughs> Go again. Well done. All right, now we've got 50 meters dialed. The only way you're not really, really good at this in two or three days is what? This is an important one. Let me see if she gets this answer correct. The only way you're not really, really good at this in two or three days is what? The only way if, if I don't work on it? Well, I or guess so. I, I wasn't thinking about that. Oh, because if doing I do the work, work on it, okay. Doing the work is something that you'll always do. I know that about you. And if, you, if you're serious about getting good, you will do the work. So if you'll do the work, the only way you're not good at this is what? Uh, if my tempo is off? Feedback. Oh. <laughs> absence of feedback. So TrackMan, GC Quad, but also the visual for range of motion. The absence of feedback will be the thing that causes you not to be good at it. But you'll be good at it even with an absence of feedback because you're world class, but when you add feedback to it, you shorten your learning curve, right? The slope is much shorter. All right. Show me a 70 backswing. Show me a 1030 backswing. Okay. Take a look at how well you did. Two forms of feedback, right? Trackman screen says what? 70.0 meters. And your range of motion screen says what? Uh, 1030. You went exactly to 1030, well done. 60. Show me a 10 o'clock backswing length. Lovely job. Trackman screen says what? 62. 62. Range of motion screen says what? A little too long. Slightly long. Makes sense. Now we have kind of a connected error. I know if I go too long with that speed sensation, it's likely to be two or three meters too long. 50. Second to last shot. <laughs> Oh, that was not good. Yeah, it's too long. Too many. <clears throat> Range of motion, almost all the way to 60. Four meters too far. Okay, final shot, 40. Too long. 40 from 50 range of motion. We got work to do. It's okay though. <laughs>